Hello everyone, it's Rick. It is May 7th, 2017. If you need to reach me, uh, my email is rick0327 at me.com. Okay, as I stated yesterday, uh, I was going to discuss a uh, writ of mandamus, which is a uh, is a, is a process to uh, have a, a higher court order an inferior court, uh, either either the court, uh, inferior court, an administrative body, administrative officer to perform their duty, or to refrain uh, from acts uh, acting in the excess of jurisdiction. Okay, so let's look at the dictionary here. Root of mandamus. It's a little slow because I have my uh, VPN. <laughs> Isn't it funny? You use your VPN and things slow down all of a sudden. It's so funny. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. I love you. Let me let me disconnect my VPN. Fucking douchebags. I well, I was doing this before. It worked fine. No problem. All right. Mandamus, we command, is a judicial remedy in the form of an order from a superior court to any government subordinate court, corporation, or public authority. Okay, you see that? Any corporation, public authority. So that goes for a bank. So if you have a bank stealing your money, because uh, they're they're honoring uh, some bullshit notice. Now, by the way, uh, those those uh, communications from child support to the bank is nothing more than a notice. It's not an order. They claim it's an order because they, they they're in on the whole scam. <clears throat> it's a notice. All they're doing is notifying you. That doesn't mean they have to do it, and they just they gladly do it. They just go along with it. And uh, I, I know I've had subscribers. Uh, reach out to them and argue with them. I've argued with them. I'm arguing with some 20-something year old uh, knucklehead who works in that section uh, of, of the Chase Bank trying to explain to me the law. <laughs> I was laughing. I was like, come on, what are you kidding me, pal? Um, anyway, uh, so this might be a way to fix that as well. I mean, it is your money that they're freezing. Okay, and again, I said this yesterday in my video. The, the only downside to this is that you got to spend money. So it's, it's just another way of going in your pocket. But after watching this video, uh, it'll give you hope. If you know, this might be worth if you if you have somebody to borrow the money from, borrow some money. Okay, because this is a remedy that the lawyers do not use. You rarely hear a lawyer mention this stuff because they they don't they don't they don't make any money by ending a matter swiftly even though that's what they're supposed to do so uh it's it's sad that when you hire a lawyer you actually got to go and and learn the law on your own just to keep an eye on your lawyer that's your lawyer's job but because they're they're a bunch of pirates that's all they are lawyers are pirates that's all they are they're a gang of pirates okay uh you're going through the sad time in your life. You get a divorce, and I and I listen. I know many guys that I work with who are great fathers, great husbands, had a great setup at home, nice home. They come home one day, and their wife just doesn't want to be married anymore. You know, let's say they got married in their early twenties. It's their thirties. She, she she wakes up. She realizes that you know what? I want to go out and enjoy life. This is the only life I'm going to get. I raised a family, and next thing you know, uh, she wants a divorce, and I've seen guys be devastated and end up living in their parents' basement, and they and they become the babysitter because you, the, the, the ex-wife wants to go out and party on the weekend, and you become the babysitter. Hey, <laughs> now that's not my story, but I was a babysitter. My my ex-wife loved going out to party. So when my kids were little, when I first got separated, 
my, I, I knew I was never going to have a problem seeing my children because I was the official babysitter. So if I, if I wasn't there by uh, 4 o'clock on a Friday afternoon, she, my ex-wife was like, where are you? Because, she, you know, she wanted to, well, she was working a little bit, but, you know, she wanted to hang out and party. That's, you know, that's what she loved doing. Uh, so, uh, sadly, uh, this is what happens to people. And these lawyers never fight for you. And it's just a disgusting, uh, you know, situation in your life, a divorce, you know, for those of you who have been through it. Uh, and there's nothing you can do about it sometimes. But, you know, and then you hire a lawyer, and a lawyer is supposed to help you. But the lawyer, all they care about, excuse me, is is, is finding out how much your assets are. How, how much money do we have to so we can pirate all this money? That's how, how, much, how much equity is in the house? How much money do you have in your 401k? How much money do you have in an IRA? They want to know all of these things because they, it's not because they're trying to protect you. They claim that's the reason, but it's because they want to see how much they're working off of. I had a friend of mine who got divorced. He said that magically when the equity was all gone in the house, they, they came up with a settlement. <laughs> okay, $60,000 later. So anyway, let me get back to this. Okay, so... Uh, Oh, with the bank, you know, you can go to the bank and file with the, the with the court saying, listen, this is not an order. This is a notice. There's no reason for them to freeze my bank account. And then you could even take it a step further saying there is no court order. Okay, so now we're going to show you how we're going to do this. Uh, public authority to do, forbear from doing, forbear from doing. Some specific act which that body is obliged under law. See that? Obligated under law to do or refrain from. What are they refraining from? Maybe they're acting partial. Maybe they're, you know, biased by their actions. And which is in the public nature. Blah, blah, blah. Of course. Let me see if I can find. Uh, Cornell usually has a good definition. Okay, there's a case law. All right, we got a good idea. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Rules of mandamus. Here's a, a famous mandamus case. Um, it's called uh, uh, Marbury versus Madison. It's a 1803 decision, I believe. Well, of course not. Here we go. I love you guys. Make things hard for me. Uh, and Damus. Uh, yeah, here we go. Oh, of course, we got to get the full thing. The Supreme Court's case. Now, this case has never been overturned, by the way. Okay, 1803, this case, anytime it's been uh, properly cited in a matter, it's never been overturned, from what I understand. But of course, you know, the hard part for us is to, getting, uh, to get to where we have to, to be to present this. And that's what I find is so hard. Like, it, yeah, they, we're allowed to object, but one, they don't tell us who to object to. And two, they don't, they don't let you get to, to object. There's all these obstacles in the way. You got the clerk, you got, you know, the lawyers. It's unbelievable. Uh, nobody answers a question. Um, the Supreme Court's case had established the power of judicial review. And I, might, I discussed this yesterday in a video, judicial review. You want a judicial body to review an administrator. Basically, the judicial body, which is the judicial branch, is reviewing an executive uh, decision, an executive action. Okay, Because we already know that a child support proceeding is under the executive body. Okay, uh, it's an administrative uh, procedure, uh, and I'm going from memory now. It's under the uh, glossary of ter uh, common uh, support terms, uh, in which a support order is established by uh, an executive uh, officer, uh, executive body. Uh, it's enforced by a child support agency and not established by a court or a judge. So basically what they're saying is the, uh, the administrative uh, pr proceedings or, uh, or order is not really an order. 
into the administrative order. So that's the whole purpose for the bells and whistles, you know, the all rise and you know, your, your honor, you know, all that bullshit is to make you think that it's it's a, it's a judicial order when it's really not. Okay. Uh, so listen, you guys see this, come back to this and you can read this all right yourself. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, okay, because I don't want to waste the whole video on this. All right, this is, now what I did was I, I went to different states, and they're everywhere, okay? So all you have to do in your state uh, is just in, the, in um, the Google, just write in rid of mandamus in your state, and all kinds of goodies come up. Like this is one in Indiana. Indiana is the uh, child support, is a bunch of scumbags, big time scumbags. They don't, they, they, they claim they don't have to, uh, you know, answer an interrogatory. Uh, some, some snot nosed f fucking kid lawyer forgot his name, but you know, somebody, somebody gave me his information. Uh, some, some snot nosed kid in his twenties, you know, busting chops because he doesn't want to answer an interrogatory. Okay. So this is, this is somebody's, uh, uh, in the Court of Appeals, a writ of mandamus. Now, this is, listen to the way he, he wrote it. It's very nice, the way he wrote it. It gets right to the point. Uh, Robert Jeffrey Pelly appeals his conviction for four counts of murder. Okay. What the hell's going on here? Now, this is what you're going to be asking in a writ of mandamus, is whether the court abuses discretion, whether the court erred the petition to appoint a special prosecutor, uh, committed a fundamental error by admitting hearsay statements. Uh, that happens all the time. That's that's really what all child support is, is, is hearsay. Okay? Um, think about it. You go to these support hearings, and they assign you an, uh, uh, an attorney, and then they assign your, your baby's mother an attorney, and it's them talking. There's no direct testimony. That's hearsay. Okay? An attorney is... Unless the attorney sworn... All that, everything that, that he or she is saying is hearsay. Okay, whether the trial court abuses discretion, these are common questions that you're going to answer. Okay, um, let me show you what I have to work with, and this is what the uh, in New York, um, understanding Article 78. Now, this is a law firm. That's what this guy specializes in. And you can make a nice living just, you know, uh, there's a bunch, you know, NYPD all by itself is 30,000 uh, people. So there's all types of people uh, being uh, written up, uh, terminated, all kinds of good stuff. So this guy can make a nice living just doing that stuff. Okay, Article 78 encompasses three writs, mandamus, prohibition, and certiorari. Okay, writ of mandamus, action, and only applies to purely ministerial duties okay it's an administrative that's what they're saying administrative it's not judicial prohibit prohibition prevents body from overstepping its jurisdiction okay uh, you know you're divorced and you're supposed to be in the same court that issued your divorce then what the hell are you doing in the family court or court of common pleas or whatever you're supposed to be in the court where you were divorced but they they have you in the other court and right that so this might have you might have to do this right from the beginning i bet you a lot of uh headaches can be uh taken care of just by doing this right away okay so i highlighted it okay this is article 7803 in new york state okay these are the questions. Remember, I just showed you the questions before. Whether the body or officer failed to perform a duty. Okay. I guess I didn't write anything there. <laughs> oh, I love you. Uh, whether the body or officer proceeded, is proceeding, or is about to proceed. Okay. So, um, void judgment. Now there's no timetable on avoid judgment, but they'll tell you in these. This is this is what I was talking about earlier with trying to file like an objection or something. Where they they put all these roadblocks, and these roadblocks can be uh, rules and procedures, unnecessary rules or procedures. Now the 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 Supreme Court has already stated that 
there that you can attack a void judgment at any time. It's the Supreme Court of the United States, the Federal Court of Appeals, appellate courts, appeal courts, there's all kinds of decisions out there. If you just put in a void judgment, uh, if you Google void judgments, there's a whole bunch of good stuff out there. But meanwhile, here, um, how articles, statute, see, statute of limitations, they'll tell you 120 days and four months, which we all know is bullshit because of void judgment, there is no statute of limitations. But again, it's another roadblock that they put up. So you would have to uh, articulate that, that the that the uh, the judgment issued by the administrative body for which you are uh, complaining about here in the writ of mandamus that proceeded, so you remember they said proceeded, that's past tense, that they proceeded without jurisdiction. That means uh, without jurisdiction, the judgment has no teeth, it ha it's void. So you'd have to argue that. Okay, uh, whether a determination was made in violation of a lawful procedure, due process, was affected by an error of law, or was, this is my favorite, arbitrary and capricious. What arbitrary and capricious is, because I say so. You know, when we deal with these one of these arrogant support magistrates, a commissioner, an associate judge, whatever, uh, it's, you know, uh, they dismissed your objection without merit. They don't explain why. That's arbitrary and capricious. Anytime they issue something without any uh, evidence to support their decision, it's arbitrary and capricious. Okay, remember that. Uh, an abuse of discretion, uh, refusing to view your evidence to show that, you know, maybe you're not working. You can't pay this. Uh, you know, they, they do this all the time. They did it with me. Uh, my ex-wife was receiving $1,200 a month for my disability on top of my child support. So that's $13,000 a year. $13,000 a year. That's without even me giving her. So I was giving her $18,000 a year. So she was making $31,000 a year from me uh, from child support and, and because of my disability. $31,000 a year. And they still increased my child support because the uh, piece of shit support magistrate, Sudeep Carr, said, well, they had the discretion to, you know, whether we're going to apply it or not, which is bullshit, because the whole basis for increasing child support or modifying child support or, or applying child support is if the financial needs of your children are not being met. Well, I already told you guys, if your children is receiving public assistance, they're already being taken care of. Now, the reason for the support hearings is to recoup welfare. Okay, now we're going to say, all right, will you guys please show me where I, uh, I authorized this loan? They can't, but you know, this is the battles we, we have, okay, uh, whether determination was made as a result of a hearing held at which evidence was taken pursuant to direction of law on the entire record supported by substantial evidence, okay, that means uh, was the determination based on evidence or was it just because they just did it, or <clears throat> well, we know they, 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 they just do it, okay. So, uh, let me, uh, hold on a second here, let me go to, now, let me go to uh, Google real fast. So, we just covered Indiana, we showed you New York, okay? Now, I'm just winging this right now, bit of mandamus, let's try Pennsylvania, okay? Okay. All right, so what we see here is they have forms. Uh, they have a guide. Um, action and man, they use Pennsylvania code. So this is the code. This is the section. Uh, remember I was telling you guys in the video yesterday, every, every state has their own code for a writ of mandamus. So we see right here in Pennsylvania, it's covered. Okay. Uh, rid of mandamus. Uh, let's try Maryland. Okay. See sample Maryland. Correcting a public record. Okay. 
uh, Maryland petition. Let's see what this looks like here. Okay, so they already have uh, a forms here if you want to pay money for it. But again, what I'm proving to you is that there's a writ of mandamus in every state. And so if you uh, were asking the child support agency to comply with the you know, Rule 33 interrogatories, we can go uh, do a, a writ of mandamus. Okay, if um, we keep demanding uh, to see jurisdiction and they don't want to do it, you go file a writ of mandamus to the higher court, okay? Because the court that we're in for child support is an inferior court, it's a tribunal. There's no jury and there's no judge, it's a tribunal. So uh, you need a higher court to tell them what to do, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut the video down now. I gave you guys a, a, a brief breakdown of what a writ of mandamus is. Tomorrow I'm gonna do a writ of prohibition, okay? Where you, the, the higher court is prohibiting the inferior court from performing or you know you're performing a function, or if it if it acted in the past, you know you can you can get uh, you know something retroactive maybe, okay? Because again, a void judgment never existed, okay? Because I got my support order vacated, uh, you know, from the date of which was two years before, <clears throat> so you know it can be done. All right, so listen, uh, I'm gonna shut this video down. You guys enjoy the rest of your Sunday.